playtime's over because tonight somebody's gonna get their ass whooped tonight it is Hello, everybody, and welcome to another star-studded edition of Bowling Shoe Handsome for January 16th, 2012. I am star number one, your host, Kevin McElvaney, here with me as always, my co-star, Young John. Young John, say hello to the nice people. Were you about to call me number two? Who does number two work for? (laughs) Very good, very good. Hey Kevin, last week was our tenth edition. I know. Of I know. Shoe handsome. We neglected to mention that, but it was a, a, a hallmark for this show, and we're glad to still be doing it after after all these weeks. That being you know, ten weeks non consecutive. Of course. And, and very excited about tonight's show uh, because it touches on a number of topics we've we've been discussing at some length recently, and, and a few a few things that we haven't really mentioned. Uh, in any specific way. And that would be the topic of sort of hazing and sabotage in professional wrestling. The episode tonight is is entitled Superstars and Sabotage. So basically what I wanted to get into here, here tonight, Young John, is the topic of, again, hazing, making guys pay their dues, but also sort of unnecessarily shooting the young guys and sort of the company as a whole in the foot while you're doing it. These These inexplicable turns and events that occur with guys who just seem to be on the cusp of establishing themselves. And you look and you just, you see them come out and you see, you see a certain thing happen in the ring, um, on the mic. And you wonder why, why is this happening? What good could this possibly serve in the long term? And before we get into pro wrestling, a lot of stuff that's going on in WWE right now, young John reminds me of something that happened a couple of years ago. Um, are you familiar with the Conan O'Brien show? Yes, that's the one where those four lovely women express their views about current issues. <laughs> I think you're thinking of the other side. Uh, um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Conan O'Brien of Conan and l- formerly Late Night of Conan O'Brien and uh, for a brief while, The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. Uh, you all may remember this and no doubt, and unless you were living under a rock at the time, you do remember it. Conan O'Brien was promised the lead spot as opposed to the tonight show on NBC when Jay Leno retired. This is a contract that was signed about five years in advance of Leno's scheduled retirement and Conan's scheduled taking over of the tonight show. Uh, problem with this was Leno did not want to cede his spot to Conan, uh, reached a compromise with the network whereby he could do his own show ahead of Conan's show. His audience followed him. They were getting older they had seen their precious JJ and they wanted to go to bed, bed after that. I'm sorry. Their what precious, happened? Their precious JJ? JJ. Am I the only one who calls him that? Who is that? Jay Leno? Yes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was sort of uh, alluding to the infantile nature of the elderly folk who laugh at Jay Leno. I see. Anyway, so Jay Leno had his audience. They didn't follow along uh, afterwards. They didn't stick around for Conan, so to speak just as they had in years before. Effectively, Conan was in the same spot. He, he was not doing well, and they sort of pinned this on him, saying, Conan, you just cannot draw in this spot like Jay could. Um, they offered to move Conan up to a slightly a slightly earlier time to put Jay on a little bit later. So I, I believe the, if the setup was 11 or 11.15 for Conan, and then Jay would come on. Uh, there were a couple different options. One of them pushed Conan back to 12 o'clock, but essentially, they wanted him to split his spot with Jay Leno. Um, the position that they put him in, whereby Leno was coming on before him, they sort of blamed Conan for not pulling in the ratings, but they had never really given him the chance. And this is kind of what I see going on in pro wrestling right now, John. This is a situation where the Jay Lenos kind of like where they are, and they don't want to see the young Conan step up. So they put the young Conans in these ridiculous situations and say, well, <laughs> if they can't make their way out of this, then they're not really meant to be in the double double E. Okay. So, I, I, so you're calling John Cena Jay Leno? In a way. Yeah, they both pronounce chins. 
They, they do. both love car. They both love cars. Yes. Um, th- that might be where the comparisons end. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just look at this as it, really, it's not something you see often in show business because people like to step down and, and, and share this. Well, I don't know if they like to share the spotlight all the time, but people know when to say when, and uh, they certainly don't want to keep other people from becoming stars. Right. You know, I mean, maybe I just don't understand Hollywood very well, but the, to, to my eyes, that's, that's not something that goes on. So and, bring, bring this back to wrestling. How, right. How well, is this related? I think there's several ways this, this is related. There are two situations specifically that I'm thinking of right now. I want right. to get into both of those, but speak to, for, me. speak to me, I'll speak to you right now. We'll go to a song and then I'll speak to you. Ah, <laughs> Okay, this is a song for the band Foreign Objects from Boston, Massachusetts. This song is called A King of Life. I said that was called a king of life i I, ron burgundy teleprompted myself song is a kind of life anyway it's been a long day young john but (laughs) great song by foreign objects uh okay so the examples Mm -hmm. i'll I'll finally give my two examples the first and foremost would be dancing brodus clay the funkasaurus who made his debut yeah made his long-awaited debut on on raw this week And and was he wearing a barney costume not far off john it was a a red latex sort of a unitard, yeah. a singlet, if you will. I will. <laughs> Even if you won't, that's what happened. <laughs> Bro- Brodus Clay came out, danced his, his hiney off, so to speak, and man, he got down. And some of the crowd liked it, some were indifferent, others booed. And I, I don't think he got a lot of uh, a lot of jeers from the crowd. But let's face it, this is not what the crowd was expecting. It's not what WWE had promised with the hype videos for him in this long awaited debut. Brodus Clay was going to be a monster. He was going to dominate the roster and rise to the top. Instead, he comes out flanked by a couple of dancers to the theme music that Ernest the Cat Miller used to use in WWE. That's what his theme music was. And what was that theme music called? Somebody call my mama. Thank you. Anyway. Well, good night, everybody. Yeah, good night. We're good. (laughs) So... Basically, he comes out instead of being this monster, he's a, he's a dancing fool. And the crowd may very well prove to love this, John, but I, I just can't help but think of uh, some other situations where some big men in WWE have, ha- have had to go through this same phase. And, and they didn't do it when they were first really coming out onto the big stage. Like, like think about Dusty Rhodes, right? Okay. He used to dance, and this was sort of a thing to, to sort of poke fun at him. And to make it a little bit harder for him to succeed, I, re- I honestly think, because he had made a name for himself in NWA, made a name for NWA along with Ric Flair and a few others, of course. And I, I viewed that as punishment. Now, the question is, why would Brodus Clay come out and do this right away when he very easily could come out and been that, that dominant monster? Yeah, you know, I really think that they kind of screw the pooch on this one. On WWE.com, the main article on the page is, why do big superstars like to boogie? And they give an example of all the superstars that 
like to boogie. Right. And it, the list includes PN News, Dusty Rhodes, Akeem, Mabel, Golga, and Rikishi. Right. Now, that's that's their examples. Those guys didn't get past the mid card. No, no. Dusty Rhodes wasn't a success in the WWE. He was a success in WCW and NWA and not at all. All the other places that he screwed up. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mabel is another example, right? He, he's a guy who maybe had a little bit of success as Viscera, but I mean, that was, that was way down the line. So I'm not saying it can't happen, but it just seems like this is not something that breeds success. Even if you look at Rikishi, right? So Rikishi, uh, his successful run was not when he was dancing. It was prior to that. He was a head shrinker. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But I'm talking about when he was main eventing. You know, when he did it for The Rock and so on. That was, you know, right. that that was not a, a dance and fool gimmick. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? This is this is a mid card uh, situation that, that that they put guys into. And you would think when somebody comes in with that much momentum, they, they would want to capitalize on it. And instead, they, they throw this curveball and it almost seems like they do it just to mess with people sometimes. Well, you see, I, I wouldn't compare that to Conan and Leno because at least Conan got a shot. Did he really, was, though? I mean, relatively speaking, no, but <laughs> at least Brut- Brutus Clay, you know, this was his debut, right? Well, he'd been on SmackDown and he was on NXT, yeah, but, is- but for all intents and purposes, this was his big time debut as a full time uh, main roster guy. Right. And you, and you only get one of those. And he came out like he did there. Now, granted, you've had a lot of guys who've who've uh, been in silly gimmicks uh, where they came out in robes uh, and various other retirers. Uh, and then they <laughs> transcended that uh, as the greater often prone to you. <sighs> but, <sighs> but again, I mean, why do it? Why? Because, I mean, this is not the cartoon era when Hunter Hearst Helmsley, where Hunter Hearst Helmsley debuted. You know, this is a different sort of WWE right now. And mm-hmm. I just view this as like they're they're trying to hold this guy back a little bit. And I don't know why. Yeah. Well, maybe they, they feel as though he needs to, I guess, um, test his mettle. I guess Perhaps. they feel as though he, he needs to start from the bottom to get to the top. And okay. this is certainly an interesting way to start at the bottom. <laughs> It definitely is, and I mean, he may get some success with it. I, I have no doubt the crowd will like him, but you know what? You're saying starting at the bottom and getting to the top. How about when you're at the top, and they try to limit what you're doing there? I'm thinking of Daniel Bryan here. Okay. So Daniel Bryan has basically proved to be a world champion wuss. Okay. You know? So he, he won the title in a very cheap manner, just pinning Big Show, not even hitting a single move on him. So, which is unprecedented even for Money in the Bank winners. Right. Right. So usually you hit your finisher and then pin the guy, even if he's, you know, all beaten and groggy. But in this case, he just pinned him. And you know what that reminds me of? I, I feel as though if you, you could probably look it up, the last time something like that probably happened, mm-hmm. the finger poke of doom. Yeah, I would think I would think that would be a really good guess, actually. And I, I hadn't thought of that. But of course, that's a whole different story. This is, you know, that's a situation where you had two guys who were really established. Right. Whereas Daniel Bryan kind of, you know, if they were going to pull the trigger on uh, on him and let him win the title, why would you do it in this this weak and unconvincing way? It devalues him. It devalues the title. Some people say the title's already been devalued, but why devalue it further? And Essentially, he hasn't done much since he won either, and he he faced a Big Show a couple of weeks ago on SmackDown and basically intentionally got himself disqualified, and then when Big Show called him out about it, he basically cowered away from him and said, oh, hey, I didn't like how that happened either, guy. It was really... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about he, that, neighbor. <laughs> it was like, hey, I'm not your buddy, guy. And <laughs> I'm not I'm your not guy, your, friend. <laughs> I'm not your friend, buddy. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So I don't get why they would do this again, unless it's to to prove some point that he's not where he belongs. Right. Well, you know, like like we discussed before, again and again, mm-hmm. you know, when the WWE sees something is creating a reaction, they run with it. You know, Michael Cole was calling. Oh, excuse me. Michael Cole was calling Daniel Bryan a, a geek or nerd, whatever he was calling him. Mm-hmm. And apparently that took off. You know, the, the king would always be like. Hey, Daniel Bryan, that's the guy you always call a geek. Look at him now. He's the champ. And I guess they just want to run with it. And have him still be a geek? And have him still, that's, he'll be a geek chic. But I mean, he's got to be, he's got to be pulling off wins. Though. I mean, even like the Miz, who was sort of, you know, this defeatable champion, right? The guy who, 
who won the title against all odds would would eke out title wins. But hey, you better watch because any night could be the night that he would lose. Yeah, you, you know, know? I, I thought the Miz made for a good champion. I don't mean this isn't like a winning champion, but like I you think, said, like like exactly what you said. Right. This could be the night that he loses, but he keeps winning. He keeps like eking out wins. But Daniel Bryan's supposed to be, you know, this shoot submission wrestler. He's not supposed to be this cowardly guy like the Miz. That was never his thing. The whole thing was supposed to be that he he just came out and he's like, I'm come as you are. I will wrestle anybody and I will beat anybody. And you can't build a guy up like that, give him the title and then completely pull the rug out from under him. That's 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 death to a to a person's character. Let me ask you a question. And I, I guess we have to take a, a music break. Um you know, I guess the, what you're saying is you're trying to keep the, stat, the status quo. But right. what do you say that this isn't keeping the status quo? This is the WWE taking a big risk by not taking a big risk. Taking a big risk by not taking a big risk. You know what? <laughs> That's just crazy enough to make some sense. I'm not really sure what you mean by it, John. Take a second to think it over. We're going to go to actually a twofer here from the band shang lang The song... Oh, well, two songs called Five Long Years and Caught in Between, up next on Bowling Shoe Handsome. And after this musical break, we'll be back with John's explanation. Thanks to the band Shangalang for for uh, allowing us the use of those excellent songs there. John, explain yourself. Um, taking a sorry, risk by the, not taking a risk by not taking a big risk. The shots were off. I'm sorry. What was I saying? WWE. No, I, I know. Uh, I said that, you know they're taking a big risk by not taking a big risk. They handed someone the belt, and mm-hmm. instead of having them, you know, giving the belt to Daniel Bryan, 
that could be construed as a big risk. Mm-hmm. Giving the belt back to CM Punk, that could be construed as be that's that's a big risk. Right. But they're not really risking anything because, like you said, they're barely wrestling. Well, it's, uh, CM Punk is. But no, I take it back. They're saying you now CM Punk didn't win because um, what's his face? His shoulder was up. Oh, got Dolph, swagger, Dolph yeah. Swagger, yeah. Or Jack Swagger, right, right, right. Right. And then, you know, he keeps losing to Dolph Ziggler. Right. So, in other words, if you don't make these guys look that dominant, then you can change your mind at any point. Right. And... But that, that seems like a big risk to me because both guys that have the big belts right now, they're not really doing much with them. Yeah, it's sort of a catch-22. On one hand, like you said, they can uh, they can choose to just sort of roll back the dial here and say, you know, this guy's champion and uh, and this guy will be dominant. And these guys weren't really at that level yet. They can you know, always decide to do that, but it devalues the title in the same in the same breath. Exactly. I'm I'm waiting for any any given role now. I'm ready for Vince Russo to come out and to have a reset. Yeah. Have one of much. his famous resets. <laughs> that would be awful. God, that would be so bad. Yeah, it would. Almost as bad as uh, as Chris Jericho crying on national television. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Uh, that would be really bad. It's it's, uh, it's a good thing that hasn't happened. Yep. Yeah. Oh, guess what, John? It totes did. It totes my goats did. <laughs> totes my goats. <laughs> good night, folks. Um, <laughs> so, of course, Jericho is emo. Dun, and dun, dun. You're talking over my hot rod circuit record. Won't you please shut the hell up? Oh boy. Anyway, so Jericho was overcome with emotion, a little bit clamped. He gave the audience a topic to discuss, but he discussed nothing himself. He was just silent, um, not violent, just uh, rather still. And Young John, I didn't watch this whole segment. Um, true to my word, I gave him about a minute to talk. He said nothing. Shut it off for a couple minutes. Turned it back on. Saw some waterworks. Turned it back off. Uh, there was nothing on TV. I changed back again and caught him on the stage walking away, and the crowd was booing him. Wow. Uh, I guess it was about a five-minute segment. I, I, I watched maybe a minute and a half of it total, two minutes, and it was I, – I, granted, I didn't watch it, but I didn't miss anything. This is – again, this is dragging out this this dead air, and um, I, I feel like even though it may be a creative idea on paper, like we said last week, I feel like they're shooting themselves in the foot a little bit with this. I couldn't have been the only one who changed the channel. Yeah, like like uh, the name of the episode last week. Uh, I'm sure we heard the sound of a million remotes clicking. Yep. Ah, ah, clever, clever girl. Clever girl. Well, I feel as though we all got Jarek rolled. Yeah, yeah, Just we as did. Just our our new friend on the our YouTube channel said. Yeah, that's we, uh, that's we a got good Jarek rolled. Good way to put it, and he keeps doing it, and. Man, I I know it's going to go somewhere. I have no doubt that Jericho is going to enter into some kind of meaningful program at some point. But again, you have to be careful with this because how much of this this sabotage behavior, this trolling, this 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 hazing of both wrestlers and the audience is going to be too much. Now, Kevin, do you think that they're swerving for the sake of swerving? Because this is from the way that you describe it and the way that I'm seeing it. Yeah. It's just grade A backyard wrestling BS. <laughs> I don't know if it's quite at that level, but um, it, was, it sounds like they're swerving for the sake of swerving. Yeah, and you know that's actually kind of how I viewed the dan- dance in Brutus Clay thing at first. I thought, is this just trolling us again? Like I thought of your your terminology for it. Is this trolling? Is right. this is that what's happening here? Is this to just them? Oh, you were expecting this, but we did this. Yeah, nice job, Russo. Jesus, lol. Dude, that's exactly what he did. But they won't expect this. Ha ha, pokey poke, nudge nudge, wink wink. Nods as good as a wink to a blind bat, eh? <laughs> holy crap dude ah, it, gets old. it gets old it gets old nothing shocking so you might as well play by the book once in a while double double e seriously this is <sighs> i don't Sigh. know man. let's just start any... watching let's just start watching superstars the the original superstars are superstars on wwe.com yes yes to both actually hmm. no no let's let, let's be current let's watch the new one and we'll just do a 45-minute podcast on that. Because <laughs> nothing will ever change on there. Everything stays the same. And instead of waiting for big things to happen, and then instead of seeing a guy that could be the next big heel, yeah. the next Seamus, the next 
Umaga in Brodus Clay, we have the next Godfather. Right. I. <clears throat> yeah, and we don't want that. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't want we don't. that. No offense, Godfather, but just. Uh... No offense, local hoes. <laughs> hoes in the area of the arena. And and hoes in local zip codes. <laughs> Different area code, that was something like that. Anyway, did you know that Victoria was originally a Godfather hoe? I did know that. Yeah, yeah. Facts that you already knew here on Bowling Shoe Handsome. <laughs> That's what we do. All right. Anything else to add on this topic? Uh, no. It's just you. You just you hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's nothing. We just keep complaining about it, and they just keep listening to our complaints and say, "I see your good point." And raise you a ridiculous storyline. <laughs> not even a storyline, because they're not telling a story. Right, 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 right. They're Very not even storylines anymore. Yep, yep. There's These are just these little inane character developments and traits. I mean, so do you think that they're just trying to kill time before the Royal Rumble? Do you think that, <laughs> I mean, it's just... If they're going to keep doing this, they might as well start having seasons. They might as well have an off-season to get people pumped up. Yeah, and I, actually, you know what? I think that's a really good point, Young John. I really think that that would make an excellent topic for next week's Bowling Shoe Handsome, should WWE have seasons. I'm, I'm the smartest person in the entire world. You heard it here first, YouTube, at, and the BradyHicks.com. Yep, so next week's topic, we'll do that. So it'll be, uh, should WWE, should pro wrestling have seasons? So you know how that sounds like a good idea and we're promising it? Yeah. Next week, we're going to talk about Randy Orton's favorite lotions. <laughs> he does we're gonna love do some, We're going to do something that no one's expecting and that no one wants to hear about. Right, right, right. True and to form. True to form of WWE. Yep, again. And, you know, we're complaining about them and, and this awkward programming, but uh, Mike on the on the board at thebradyhicks.com, not to be confused with Mike Bessler, but just plain old Mike, uh, <laughs> pointed out that that essentially we were talking about how awkward things are by being incredibly awkward ourselves, and that's what we do do here but i said that's what we what that's what we do do here but i i I have to point out that at least we are not selling millions of dollars in ad space you know we make no money off of this at all you know so uh, so if we want to be boring that's our damn prerogative microsoft was listening to this as an example for ad space so there there it goes Ah. there it goes ah we're stuck. We're going to be stuck on tbh.com <laughs> with uh, the Babe of the Week, AJ, followed by next week's Babe, uh... May Young. May Young. <laughs> and then Luna Pashan after that. Ah, uh, no. Okay. With that, let's go to a song. Last song of the night by the band Jonesen. The song is called Lone. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right, that was Jones in with Loan. All right, Young John, I, I wanted to talk about another topic here. Uh, well, no, it's 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 along the same lines with sabotage. This is sort of a self sabotage, if you will. I uh, will. You will. How dare you crack whip at John Belaris? So I was on the Yahoo, and I saw that the number one search term on Yahoo right now, local, this is period, is John Belaris. Young John, explain to the nice people who John Belaris is. John Belaris is a weatherman in Philadelphia. He was here for a bit, and then he proclaimed the blizzard of the century was coming, and then we got two inches of snow. <laughs> so he went to New York. And then he came back, and then he had an interesting vacation. Do you want to tell him about that, Kevin, or should I? The vacation? You go ahead and tell them about the vacation. Okay. We should. It's worth mentioning, though, that John Bolaris is something of an icon around here. He's He's been around. He's been a fixture in Philadelphia for a long time. He's up there with Pat Burrell uh, as an urban legend <laughs> maker. I, I have stories about him. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. I, I heard a couple of your Pat Burrell stories before. Yes. Uh, okay. So... I think it was in 2000. I think it was two years ago. So John Bolaris was in Miami Beach. Uh-huh. He meets two women in a bar. Right. And I guess they were drinking and dancing or whatever. And he woke up the next morning in a cab, and he couldn't remember anything that happened. Right. So when he talked to the women that he found those two women the next night, the same exact thing happened. Huh. And then a few days later, they found his credit card had been billed for like tens of thousands of dollars. Right, and uh, he went to the he went to the police, and he like uncovered some kind of like crime ring, in in Miami. Right, it's just an it's an amazing tale. Yeah, he'd been drugged, mm-hmm. and uh, and robbed, and it was this big news story. Um, came out last year, and it was a big news story here in Philadelphia. Our Daily News reported it. Uh, all the stations reported it. Well, I don't know if all the TV stations, because he was specific to our, our fo- local Fox affiliate. But uh, it was it was big news around here, and and now it's big news again, because he uh, he recounted this story to Playboy magazine, I guess the current issue, and he embellished it a little, and he talked about the fact that he had originally gone out, and uh, his intention was hanging out with them to quote get laid, <laughs> and that. I don't know how this came up, but he said he likes to watch football naked with his lady and a bottle of wine. And who doesn't? <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, and they can't. Yeah. And he was suspended and then fired. I guess this isn't the current issue because this, this all started like a month or so ago. But, uh, man, that is that is some self-sabotage. But, man, what what a weak, weak form of sabotage. If anything, I mean, John Bolaris, like everybody likes him because he seems like a real dude. Yeah. Like, should, doesn't this make him seem more like a real, real dude? Aren't there like way more ridiculous people on any given news station than him? Definitely. Definitely. But, Just look at Fox. Absolutely. Fox Fox in general. Fox, uh, or Fox, Fox News. Our local Fox affiliate as well. Oh, yeah. Is... Oh, yeah. What about that really orange guy in the morning? He's strange. Which Looks one? like a catcher's. <laughs> He looks like uh, a catcher's mitt, like half of TNA's roster. <laughs> um, half of TNA's divas. Yeah, and and, every, and all the, uh, the all the people have, have like this kind of blank stare. And What's the Mike Jarek? Is that his name? I don't. I forget the guy's last He's name. He's a weirdo. It's Mike and Chanel, and there's a couple other people. Oh yeah. They're all kind of weird. Yeah, Mike. Mike had like a national show before Mike and Juliet. I think it was. I don't know if that was the name of the oh, show. Oh yeah, those yeah. Were, Good Day the... Live. I think it was called something like that. Yeah. There you go. So anyway, John Blair, you will be missed once again. I, I do remember when uh, our our mutual friend John, the the real deal, uh, uh, he and I went up to WrestleMania 20 in New York, and one of the the biggest highlights of that trip was actually uh seeing John Bolaris on the local news at that point where uh, where he may or may not have been predicting storms of the century when they didn't occur. Yes. Uh, this same real deal saw John Bolaris at a Phillies game one time and told him he sucked right to his face. Wow, what a duplicit young individual. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the real deal. Uh, he's he's going to love this. He, he, he loves attention. But that's all right. He's our real deal. So anyway, uh, do you have a background of the week? I do have a background of the week. My background of the week is Tori Wilson. All right. Former and WWE diva. A I'm former trying... diva. Yep. I'm trying to keep it close to home. I keep doing real women when I should be doing these fake wrestling women. <laughs> now, uh, Tori Wilson 
Do you know who she's currently dating, Kevin? A Rod. She's dating A Rod. I didn't think you yeah. knew that. I don't know I, why I thought that, but yeah. I was I was really hoping you would bring up Billy Kidman. <laughs> and how the, the hell? How in the hell did Billy Kidman get Tori Wilson? Did you ever look at his trunks? That's how he got her. His t- <laughs> the cruiserweight super package. Of course, of course. Are you referring to his cruiserweight tag team title? Of course, of course. Do you remember I, that? Towards uh, but, the end of WCW, yeah. they had the cruiserweight tag belts. Is that when? Didn't they also have a six-man title or something too? They were I pretty ridiculous. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but anyway, I, yeah. I think but, Rock and Rebel and Rebels Army were the first people to win the six-man title. But yeah, Billy Kidman was hung like a Virgil. Um, yeah. Come on, there are stories about that guy. We all know. Oh, <laughs> Joel, I like. <laughs> you know, I, I don't care. I, I don't care. It's not my fault that I noticed. Uh, so anyway. Uh, so you have Tori Wilson as your background. I actually have a picture of John Valeris uh, superimposed onto the Sistine Chapel. It's, <laughs> I wish that existed. Uh, can you? Can anybody out there who's listening who would like to make that for me? I will give you fourteen dollars and thirty six cents for that. Nice. Arbitrary number I just made up in my head. It sounds about right. It's negotiable for up to two or three cents more or less, depending on what your uh, preference is. Uh, anyway, I just, else put, to... I just put the picture up. You want to take a look at it? Yeah, okay. Here we go. Is that current? I don't know. I was going to say, she's looking pretty young still. I mean, I, well, actually, we, we saw her, uh, Brady and I saw her at a convention. She's still, you know, she's still looking youthful. I mean, she's not very old, really, but um, right. she, looked, she looked good. And, you know, honestly, it's probably good she's not wrestling anymore because that Divas division isn't too good. Um <laughs> So let me see how old good she for, is. Good for good for her with with A Rod, man. That's, yeah, she's 36 years old. They're both doing well. Good for them. Oh, and I saw a recent. I did see a recent picture of her, uh, and she looks pretty good still. Yeah, and uh, yeah, good for her, man. You say good for A Rod? Good for both of them. Oh yeah, good for A Rod. He 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 deserves a good girl after dating all the supermodels he's dated. Yeah, exactly. And Cameron Diaz. <laughs> what that the praying mantis? <laughs> she, um, she's a model i don't know what for but i i feel bad saying that because cameron diaz is so talented oh wait she's not and i don't but it's funny everyone's thinking the same thing every time they hear about cameron diaz man i i don't care i just don't care about her i i, I i'm not someone i don't care that she looks like a praying mantis because like it doesn't matter like it really doesn't matter if if i enjoy like her movies or or things that she's in I, i'm not gonna care but she sucks so she was hot in the mask <laughs> and that's it she was, and she was actually good in The Mask. The Mask was, you know, I mean, for what it was. I, I definitely, it's not one of my favorite Jim Carrey movies, but she was good in it. Um, so good. She's so good. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't go that far. Anyway, <laughs> anything, to, anything to add, John? No, anything to add, Kevin? Nope, I think we uh, we ran a little bit longer than intended, but still a pretty brief show all in all. That's what she uh, said. Yeah. <laughs> she Everybody, said all that. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And <laughs> thanks to everybody for tuning in. Uh, continue to follow us on YouTube. Email your comments into bowlingshoehandsome at gmail.com. Check us out at thebradyhicks.com. Comment away. Leave us your thoughts. And again, any input next uh, that you can give us for next week, we'd like to uh, share your comments, answer your questions regarding next week's topic, which will be should WWE have seasons. And uh, we will talk about that next week. So again, thanks everybody for tuning in to Bowling Shoe Handsome. So don't ask me how I am. Don't ask me how.